Hey everybody, Gary with Basecamp Trading. Welcome to Intro to Trading. Today we're going to talk a little bit about Renko style price bars, what they are and how they work. This is a Unirenko chart. Now these are still price bars, just like an open high-low candle or a candlestick. These are price bars, they just form differently. Each one of these bars have different settings available and we can change the settings to whatever we want. This chart is what we call a two tick trend, a five tick offset, and a 10 tick reversal bar. And what that means is that every time price is moving in this direction, every time it moves two ticks to the upside, it forms a new bar. So every two ticks, it is forming a new bar. Our offset is five ticks, so we know that the body of each one of these bars is going to be five ticks plus the two tick trend. So the body of each one of these bars will be seven ticks or potentially more. The body itself will only be seven ticks. Now occasionally, if you get price movement ranging inside the bar that's more than seven ticks, then it'll leave a little wick. So you can see, for example, that this bar had approximately uh, nine ticks worth of movement in it. So that was seven ticks plus a little wick of two ticks. That lets us know that this bar actually, price was moving up and down and actually moved two ticks below this bar, went back up, closed, formed a new bar two ticks above. So the disadvantage is that if the price movement inside that bar is less than seven ticks, we don't know what that is. So if there was five ticks worth of up and down movement in this bar, we would not know that because the bar has a seven tick body, period. Now reversal bars, these are reversal bars you can see, so we're pushing up and then we reversed. So this is a reversal bar. And then we push back down for a couple bars. We reversed again. This is a reversal bar back the other way. And we continue to push up higher. So we know that each reversal bar is 10 ticks plus the two tick trend. So the maximum reversal bar can have up to 12 ticks inside it. The advantage is, is we know exactly where each and every bar is going to close. So if price continues to move higher, we know that two ticks more, this price bar is going to close exactly at 26.74. Now, if within the body of this bar, price reverses 10 ticks plus another two ticks to the downside, we know that this bar is going to be a reversal bar. Again, these are your reversal bars. We know this is going to be a reversal bar, and we know that it's going to close exactly at $25.62. So a regular bar can have up to seven ticks worth of movement in it, and we don't see anything. And it can have up to 11 ticks worth of movement inside it, and it'll leave a little wick as it continues in the same direction. If we move more than 11 ticks back in the other direction, 12 ticks, it'll form a reversal bar. And again, we know exactly where each and every bar is going to close as far as price is concerned, both to the upside and to the downside. What we don't know is when each bar is gonna close because if the market is chopping within a five or six tick range, it could stay on this bar for hours. And because this bar is not going to form another bar until we get five ticks worth of um, movement inside it plus two tick trend or price moves at least two ticks higher than the previous bar. Because again, these bars form new bars every time price moves two ticks higher than the previous bar. So again, if the market is chopping within a seven tick range, we can stay on one bar for hours and not even see anything. 
then if the market's topping within 11 tick range, it could still be on this same bar. We'd see a little wick down here because it moved more than seven ticks, but we could still be on this same bar for a very long time because we don't form a new bar until price actually moves up two more ticks than the previous bar. Now with time bars, two minute bar for example, we know exactly when each and every bar is gonna close. What we don't know is what the size of it's going to be. So here's an example. This is a two minute chart. And see how noisy this chart is? The Renko charts are just much cleaner, much smoother, much more orderly. The pivots are much easier to recognize and the chart is much cleaner. But again, the Renko bar, we know exactly where each bar is going to form a new bar, where on this chart we have no idea what the price is going to be. Because this bar, you can see inside of a two minute time period, moved this much. This bar inside of a two minute time period moved almost three times as much. But we know that every two minutes it's going to form a new bar. What we don't know is how many ticks worth of movement are going to be in each bar. So again, there's some advantages and disadvantages. Now, if you're in compression and we're forming bars every two minutes, we recognize that we're in compression because again, if price is moving less than 11 ticks back and forth, back and forth, back and forth on the Renko chart, we're still gonna be on the same bar. If price is chopping in an 11 tick range on a two minute chart, we're going to see a new bar every two minutes. They're just going to be small bars, less than 11 ticks each time. So we can recognize compression where it's less easily recognized on the Renko chart. But the Renko chart is much cleaner and, for me, much easier to use. The other nice thing about the Renko chart is we can base our entries off of WIC bar setups. And we know exactly where each and every bar is going to close. So we know exactly where we can place our entry and at what price we're going to be filled. And we know exactly where we can place our stop loss and at what price our stop loss is going to be filled at. So this is a, rank, a Unirenko bar. There's another common type of Renko bar that's called the classic Renko bar. And this is what a classic Renko bar looks like. Classic Renko bars never have a wick at all. This particular bar is a two brick bar, which means that every two ticks in each direction, you're going to form a new bar. So each bar has a total potential of four ticks worth of movement. So you can move two ticks to the upside before it forms a new bar, or if it moves two ticks to the downside, it'll form a new bar this way. I like the wicks because it gives me a little better idea of what the movement inside the bar is if it's more than the body of the bar. But again, we know exactly where each bar will close to the upside, where it'll close to the downside as far as price is concerned. But again, we have no idea when each bar is going to close because again, if we have four ticks worth of movement back and forth, up and down, up and down. That could go on for a very long time before it actually forms a new bar because these bars only form every two ticks. They're two brick bars. So that's kind of an introduction to uh, Renko style price bars, what they look like, how they work, what the advantages are, and what the disadvantages are.